don't have anything uh, prepared because uh, it happened <laughs> really fast here. So um, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we Hyperion released uh, the new version of uh, the SDK for Amiga OS 4, uh, version 54.16, and uh, I worked for that to uh, to make it happen and uh, be released so that we can uh, have a newer version of the SDK with all these new header files for a new lib and from the exec SD uh, team. And uh, one of the main goals was to bring newer versions of uh, tools that the developers might need. So, uh, I don't know how many of you had uh, a look on that or you tried it already. Uh, the, the goal, as I said, is update the tools. Most of the things were out there already, but they were ne never in, in, a, in a package ready to uh, install and have everything working. In uh, this version of the SDK, we have for the first time uh, newer uh, compilers uh, GC compilers, version 6, 8, 9, <coughs> 6, 8, 10, and 11 are included. Uh, and we also have, after a lot of years, the VBCC uh, included completely, the latest versions of uh, VBCC included in the SDK, ready for you to, to install it and to use it uh, out of the box uh, without modifying any uh, libraries or any header files or whatever it was needed before. Uh, also, we brought uh, some tools that help with version control systems like uh, Subversion or uh, Git. Uh, we have two tools in there, uh, one the, the Subversion of course and the, the latest versions of this and the SGit which is a simple Git version that uh, doesn't include all the, the commands of Git, but uh, a good amount of commands that we can use to, to uh, uh, synchronize your code with a Git uh, repository. Um, and we included newer versions of profilers. We have the profiler by Mike Steed. And uh, included, I, I talked with him and he was more than happy to, to provide it uh, for the SDK, and uh, we also have uh, Eronymous, uh, the latest updated versions, and uh, all the stuff are included inside the uh, SDK. I updated also the documentation that comes with the SDK, the introduction uh, PDF file, uh, to give uh, a good uh, idea of all these changes and how someone could use them. We included more documentation by for the make file, the, the make and the GCC, the different versions, and uh, the BBCC as well. So if someone downloads the SDK, it has all that documentation, all the needed documentation included in PDF files. Uh, those uh, PDF files are, the license of these uh, files are uh, GPL, so you can uh, include in the, the SDK. And uh, some people question me, asked me about the in, uh, why we included the GCC 6. Uh, this is the latest version of GCC that uh, someone can use to create optimized code for the SPE uh, CPUs, which is uh, the CPUs that the uh, A12 uh, 22 plus is, going, is using. So if someone uh, develops something that uses a lot of uh, math instructions, this is it to, to compile that, those parts. And uh, documentation for that and some uh, uh, information on how to do it is included in the PDF uh, file that comes with the SDK. Uh, the SDK is not, it doesn't have an update path so if you ha already have the SDK installed, it is better to uh, create a new installation uh, so, you can have, uh, so you don't have any complications. And uh, that's pretty much it.
the the goal, as I said, is to to do the, the next step with all the updated uh, versions of the tools that we we currently have. Uh, but we can do uh, even more. Uh, I already started working on the new next version, which I don't know when it's going to to uh, uh, be released. But we have a lot of things that need to be updated as well. For example, the core utils, which is uh, uh, commands that come from the Unix uh, uh, side, let's say, the open source community. And also, we need to have an update for make, CMake, and all this stuff. And uh, I know that people in our community worked on these things before. Uh, and I'm trying to communicate with them and uh, create a new a new version or help me create a new version. Uh, I hope that if anyone is interested uh, to contact me and uh, try to figure out how we can do uh, that uh, amount of work. And that's pretty much for the SDK. Uh, if you have any questions or you would like to uh, answer on something, Please let me know. If if you install the SDK clean, yes. How complicated is it to pull out it, are the files that you add to the SDK in like specific local folders? Is it fairly easy to add the things from your old SDK onto the new SDK? The uh, file structure of the SDK of the new SDK is exactly the same like the previous one. Right. Uh, so it depends how you use the previous SDK. If you, you know, there is uh, a lot of libraries out there that you can grab and uh, use them in uh, your applications, right? So the, uh, it is mentioned in that introduction uh, PDF file that if you want to use those files, you have to install them into the local folder. Right. If you have that there, and you go and do the installation of the new SDK over that SDK that you had, then most of the times it's going to work just fine because the installer uh, doesn't uh, remove that local file. And uh, the reason uh, that is recommended to put all these libraries into that folder is because the installer doesn't remove it. So if you do a new install, your local folder should be empty. Can't you just copy all your it's old local folder? It's not completely right. empty. It has some uh, things, but you can I would say that uh, you can copy the, the missing files from the old local exactly. folder and you have uh, everything It'll all be good. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was wondering. And that should, should work. Uh, the only thing that you might need to do uh, <coughs> manually is if you create links from the S objects uh, assigned, some SO libraries, dynamic libraries, yeah. to the SDK so that you can use them when you combine your applications, mm -hmm. then you might need to do that uh, again. Reset them, right. That's, uh, that's the only thing that you might need. Uh, but because it, this SDK is not heavily uh, tested with uh, previous installations, that's why we uh, I don't recommend to do an update over and over the course. Right. Or you can back up the old SDK and try that, and if it works, that's fine. Otherwise, you can do it manually. The local file should have only the things that you don't uh, want the installer to remove. Right. And then you said there were all a bunch of different compilers in the new SDK. I know that you worked out a mechanism, so it's possible for the developer of using the new SDK to switch between the compilers. Do you want to explain to them how that ah, works? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, <coughs> while you use the installation process, you can choose which versions of compilers you want to, to install, uh, between uh, 6, 8, uh, 10, and 11. But uh, based on this order, uh, the installation creates which is your default, let's say, this is it. So if you uh, execute on your terminal GCC, which version of this is going to be used? So uh, first of uh, all is the GCC uh, as uh, set as default, then 10, 11, and the last of, uh, of this, uh, the 6, version 6, because it is a very specific, uh, uh, a GCC for very specific uh, uh, situations and scenarios to, to build code, right? So, uh, 
if you miss, if you if you disable the installation of this C8, for example, then this C10 is going to be the default. But if you want to install all the, the versions, but you want to change the default one, there is a, a tool under the folder tools, which is, which is uh, named set the default TFTFGC. And if you uh, double click on that, it opens a, uh, a request and you can click which version you want to set as default. As, you, as uh, soon as you do that, this version is going to be default on your system and you can uh, use it without even resetting your machine. Uh, this, this is a pretty simple uh, script. It doesn't say which versions of this uh, are installed. And the reason is because it is uh, just a DOS script. Uh, I didn't want to, to make it uh, over complicated. As it, 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 it's not so necessary. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know which version so you installed. You, right. you know which one you want to make uh, as a default. Right. You click and that creates all the, this actually creates some link uh, files in uh, the GCC, in the SDK folder. So it's kind of just hard to soft links, right? It's not like soft rename, links. It's not like renaming files. Or just no, 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 it doesn't change the files. Yeah, it, it just creates uh, it creates soft links. links. Soft link. Actually, it just creates a GCC, let's say, a link uh, file that points to the version that you okay. selected. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So that way it's, you could be normally compiling under eight, yeah. and then you decide, hey, I want to compile a version for the table, or click on six, hit recompile, you come yeah. up with this table yeah. or specific version, save that off to the side, click back to eight, go, go, keep on working. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you want to use multiple uh, versions of GCC without doing all this stuff, you can also use uh, GCC DAS 6, for example, and you have the uh, GCC or use uh, GC DAS 11 or G++ DAS 11 and you have that version. They, they, those, all these are uh, working and one of the, the uh, goals of having all these uh, GC versions was to make them uh, work in uh, parallel. Right. Right? Like, like many are used to from uh, Linux or uh, Mac OS or whatever other systems use different versions of this. Um, with the, all the different compilers, obviously 6 is there for the sake of the SPE support. Between 8, you said 8, 10, 11, yeah. 9 also or 9? No, 9. 8 and 10. Are there certain benefits to using either 8 or 10 or 11 or reasons to use one or the other? Uh, the, the most benefit is the the, the the biggest benefit is to, to, to have a, available the latest version, right? We all want to have the latest version, so uh, 11 is there. But uh, it, it 11 and 10 were not uh, tested that for so long. They are tested in many different uh, uh, projects and big projects uh, by the community, and uh, most of the problems are fixed. But there might be something that uh, is missing. Right. Uh, so, uh, but the eight is uh, is released in our community for more than six years. Right. So it is well tested. Very mature. Yes, exactly. And um, so I prefer to have eight in that package for that reason, and to give the opportunity to everyone to experiment, let's say, with the, the newer version. If we, uh, my plan is in the next versions, if we see that everything works well and uh, no problems are out there, uh, we can stick with the latest versions only. But I, I was thinking about the scenario like, okay, if you include only 11 and 11 has a problem, when then a developer what has to do? Or go and fix that problem and uh, make his own compiler and then use that, or he has to try and figure out a way to include uh, the GCA. So if you have that there, let's say like a, a fallback solution, okay? Right. If something goes wrong and you need a GCC that is well tested in our community, go and use this uh, this version. It's, it, it doesn't make 
too much, uh, it doesn't take too much of space. Let's say, okay, we are going to remove anything, but we are going to say 150 megabytes of right. space. It's not something like that. Right. Right. So for me, it, it makes sense, especially because if you remember 53.34, the previous version of the SDK, was coming with uh, GCC4. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is a big leap from that version to 8 and uh, 11. There are some changes that happen between this version 8 and 11 for GCC that might uh, influence the compiling of uh, some code for, for some people. So it will be better for now to have all these versions and then we can say, okay, we can remove 11, uh, sorry, we can remove 8 and stick with 11 only. It's not a big problem. Do you think one compiler versus another makes either more compact or better optimized code? Or for example, I was under the impression that 11 had some features to it that might help porting foreign code to the Amiga to make it easier to port, that they had certain aspects of the compiler that would support. And if you have the latest version, you can gain uh, some uh, uh, benefits from the optimization of the latest version of the GC, right? And you can get some uh, uh, more informative uh, output from the GCC based on what you are combining if you have some issues on, on in your code. Uh, GCC 11 needs uh, giving you more information about uh, this is not uh, set correctly or you, well, we have that, uh, some warnings. Uh, which might be helpful because by that you might find uh, fixed bugs that you didn't have a clue about that. Uh, so yeah. For me, it's better to, to use the latest version, for me, uh, if possible. But uh, lately, that I started with uh, the project that has to do with the WebKit, uh, it is recommended to, to use GCC 9 and above okay, for that project, which is a huge project. Right? So I don't think that what you can do with 11, you can't do it with GCC 8. You can do it just fine. Uh, there's no barrier so that you can say, okay, I need 11 or 12 to go with that. So you talked earlier about CodeBench. Have you tried it? It all works good with CodeBench? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just calling GCC straight. Yeah, exactly. So whatever you have set exactly. just works. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. uh, the way that CodeBench works with uh, the SDK, and the, because we didn't change anything in the SDK, in the structure and the commands, um, yeah, it works out of the box with that protocol. And then any project, uh, any application that uses the installation of the SDK works out of the box. So now all we need to do is, Rigo, hello Rigo, we need a new update. A Come new on, update man. On. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of the code events. It's, uh, it's fascinating. Yeah. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, more developers to, to use the SDK. Ah, also, I forgot to, to mention one thing. We updated uh, most of the, if not all, the examples that are uh, in uh, the SDK. Yeah, the example code, oh, it's for example code. Example code, cool. yeah. Which is, uh, uh, and remove obsolete calls to the API and things like that. And we saw exactly how uh, it's the optimal way to, to use the new stuff. Um, we fixed uh, a few bugs that were in the previous uh, SDKs, and also we included again the scheduler that this comes, of course, from uh, Steven's uh, team, the executive SD team, that had to do with the scheduler, and you couldn't compile uh, the add tools with the previous uh, SDK. Now this is fixed, and everyone can build his own, their own GCC uh, person. And so yeah. you guys got it so that all the uh, the example OS for GUI examples and all that are compiling without errors now? Yeah, without errors. Because I, I knew a bunch of them compiled with warnings and errors, but yeah. it, was a, it was a learning experience. Yeah. You get it, you're like, okay, how do I fix this? Okay, I'll spend a weekend trying to figure it out. Yeah, because yeah. I think that if you have an SDK and you, you uh, promote it for users to use it, and you want to show them the good way that you need to program and create things, if you have the uh, obsolete mode, 
that's, a good that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And, uh, and also we change things that have to do with the DOS uh, commands and uh, examples that deal with the DOS commands a lot. Uh, yeah. You also included the MESSL. The latest, the um, MESSL SDK, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, MESSL uh, always came with the, uh, the SDK. And it has one example in there. Right. And uh, the, we have also the latest uh, magic user interface uh, SDK included. Ah, okay. And uh, what else? Yeah, pretty much like that. Uh, we had some discussions to include more and more stuff, but uh, libraries and things like that. Right. Uh, but there was uh, a decision that we don't need to make the, the SDK huge and uh, not everyone is going to use it. And, uh, but isn't bit bigger better? No. <laughs> <laughs> not always. And, yeah, we decided to. You'll never make it as a Windows one. developer, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. Come on. You know what I'd like to, to have? Uh, a tool, a, a terminal tool uh, in the SDK, and you can say, okay, I want to install a library kernel, or I want to install. Or the open SSL or whatever, the JPEG uh, library. Right. Okay, so we can run install this and we can have that. Right. Maybe, sometimes. That's uh, one of the, the ideas that I would like to have into the SDK. Or this would be helpful that you can have the minimum SDK and right. then say, okay, I want to install this C20. Move it. Right. That's the, the, that would be quite useful. One step at a time. One step at a time. <laughs> the, uh, the documentation is included with the current SDK. That's those headers and the auto docs are against what the release version of that's the latest version. Update two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, no. That, or even even further. Even further. So it includes stuff from the current data. Yes. Okay. Yes. It includes uh, information from the new lib uh, 5380. All right. 5380 was released a couple of weeks ago through AMI update. Yeah. So everyone can use it. But what about the DOS SDK? Because there's been, Tom's done quite a bit of work on DOS since update 2 came out. I think, uh, if I recall correct, the latest version that we had up to April, that was uh, quite uh, tested on the beta test uh, team. Is in uh, the. You know, I'm just worried about the possibility of auto docs included with the SDK, not necessarily reflecting what's available in the public libraries. The public, uh, uh, inter uh, the public It probably doesn't matter because everyone who's a developer for the platform is almost inevitably a beta tester as well. Yes. However, I'm just I was just curious about that. If we, I, I I don't recall uh, quite well right now the version, but I think that even if you release something that in the SDK and the API is much newer than what you have in the public. You give the opportunity to the developers to uh, Release uh, re create things that are user or prepare for that. Now, when this is going to be released by Hyphena, I don't know yet, but uh, we, pu you, we push, to <laughs> I'm pushing to, to have things released. Okay, the other question I had for you was, you remember Spark used to have an AMI update uh, database for SDK components, particularly yeah. including things like shared objects and so forth that were released by third parties. Yes. That was a hugely useful tool for folks. Is there any possibility that people on the SDK team, which I think right now probably just you, but yeah. is there any possibility that that will be a model for the future so that instead of downloading 360 megabytes, we can download, like an expat the library gets updated, we can download the new includes and documentation via SDK. Most of the applications and libraries, uh, like Expat, for example, uh, when you download the latest version, they include the SDK. And if you have the SDK installed, then they are right. installed right now. Uh, I don't see why we can't do that. I, I truly believe that uh, if we can have the minimum uh, SDK patterns and the, the major the tools for people to use them, um, it will be just fine and then uh, install anything from AMI update or whatever. But the thing is, uh, and that's my uh, perception, that 
some people don't know that, okay, I need a provider, what I'm going to use. Okay, you need to go to OS, OS4 Depot and try to find a provider or whatever. Or even you don't know that you need a provider for a specific problem to, to be solved. Uh, that's the, the role of the SDK, to provide you all the needed uh, tools uh, to start uh, developing and uh, to, to give you, to create an awareness of what tools are out there. And also promote the, the work pro that people do. Like profiler 1.1, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is great. And the, uh, the Aronus that uh, was updated after so many years. What about uh, debuggers at this point? Because GDB still has some significant issues on our platform, and I don't know that anyone's actively working on that. Um, uh, Outkill had tools. So what's the GDB debugger? It's a GUI based. It's pretty good for saying it's debug 101 or something. Yeah. yeah. And let's call this. Let's call uh, Those, uh, it's debug 101 and uh, spotless that are uh, created by Outkill, uh, and they are not right now quite mature to say that, okay, uh, go and use that because that's uh, the best solution of them. It is the best solution, but it's not quite mature yet. So to be included in SDK. So I didn't want to uh, provide tools that are not uh, completed. Okay. And uh, the other way to debug is with the GDB. Uh, there are some issues with the X5000 that were uh, as much as I know, uh, sold by the executive GP. They are. Yeah, yeah. but they are not uh, yet released to the public. They are in beta testing. So if this is uh, uh, released, we are going to have GDP. From my uh, side, what I would like to see is uh, more tools to come out, or even if we can uh, create something like the remote, remote debugging, having your OS4 running beside you, and from another machine with uh, Linux or whatever, you use the IDE from there and debug the code from the... Right, because right now with, uh, without GDB, we don't really have a good tool for doing address-based exploration. So you're, you're trying to find, as you yeah. travel along, some link list to some variable where it's actually physically stored and what... It, you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. The, yeah. And at least on my machine at home, it's yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't really use it for a lot of stuff. So you can, you can I, I can do it for basically. I can set breakpoints and I can do some basic things. I can also use printf for that sort of thing. Yes, so right. yeah. The thing that I need GDB for, unfortunately, right now is it's not stable. Yeah. Or, or it gives me wrong results. It'll actually, it'll, it'll, it'll like to read the wrong results. It says very funky things. So. Okay, but somebody's actually, it sounds like it was a kernel issue rather than a GDB issue. Uh, I'm not sure if this I get that. It's always going to be here with the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes, we can have a bike. Do we have to get the cuffs? And then try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but uh, they did the work and they. Uh, it's on an airplane right now. He won't hear what we said. Exactly. The work is done and uh, we just uh, to personalize Hyperion to release. It's still fun. Okay. <laughs> and then I guess lastly, speaking about I think the relationship between the team and Hyperion and so forth. I know you've done a huge amount of work and the SDK has basically been, well, I don't know. I mean, it's been, not. You've been championing so many things over the past year. Uh, yeah, the thing is with the SDK, the things, all the stuff that they have included in the SDK were out there. Okay, they, they were in OS for Depot, they were on GitHub, and you have to, you had to combine things to make them work on your system. So my work was to, to find all this stuff, bring it into the SDK, Try to make uh, the uh, them work all together, uh, orchestrate in a, in a way the, uh, how they work, how they are going to be installed on users' uh, machine. Update the the documentation, push the all the uh, developers to update the examples. I did a lot of uh, updates myself, and they proved approved them. Uh, so to be included in the sphere and also in uh, the SDK, and uh, find people to update the, the tools. For example, uh, I talked with uh, Costal to update the, uh, the uh, tool that we have inside the SDK that we can use to, to read the autodoc files. So the sure. Um, and 
And also I discussed with uh, Dr. Walker and Frank Maniak about the BBCC, uh, tested everything that are uh, working quite well, and all this stuff. That was my job. It took five, six months, but it was uh, to, to find all this stuff and uh, use them inside the SDK. Do you need assistance for the next release? And that's what I was going to ask. Is, is, do you need to pitch with more volunteers? Or? The thing is that uh, there are a lot of things that we need to, to do, right, in our uh, in our all sport. And to make, there are a lot of tools that we would like to offer in the latest version. But this is not possible for for me, or I don't know who is going to get involved to make all this stuff. So what I'm planning to do the next month is to create a small civil uh, website where people are going to are going to put ideas. What do they want? I want a new version of Mail, or I want the latest GCC version. Okay, and others will be able to vote the, the ideas that they like most. So from this list that is going to be created, pick up the two best or dual <laughs> And work on this. Was we on OS4 coding? Will it? Will, 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 the, will the poll be on OS4 coding? .net? That seems to be where a lot of the developers. I don't know where, where it's going to be. Yeah, okay. yeah but uh, we will see. Yeah. Um, the the latest SDK uh, is there a comprehensive list of what is in it that is not inside the compressed file that is distributed, the so that someone can actually. Ah. Know what's in it without having to download the whole in thing. In the, the new site that Hyperion has on uh, his first uh, uh, page at the website, has a good amount of all the, the changes. Okay. And is, is this, uh, I, I, I'm a little ignorant about the previous distribution uh, models when it comes to the SDK, but is this um, uh, SDK freely downloadable or is it Free. something that you yeah. have to? Authenticate uh, on nothing. You can hyperion. go to the, the website and not even log in. Yeah. You can go and download. So maybe it would be useful to distribute the PDF that comes with it. That will 15 page that um, George wrote up. Hyperion does at the payment yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> 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 Looks like you're with the wrong one. Three or four. Oh, wow, right there. Yeah, that's a, a good uh, list of uh, all the updates uh, that were included over there. But I mean, there's a ton of stuff in there. So, for example, it says the latest examples. Well, there's lots of examples. There's right. lots of examples, there's reaction examples, there's. there's <laughs> And my, and my plan for the next version is if anyone wants to contribute with examples yeah. that are useful and generic for people to, to use it, uh, even add more examples there. Okay. Because someone that starts to, has an idea and wants to implement something, the first thing that you can do is go and check the examples and take part of this code and use on this. Uh, right. Uh, this uh, application. And, and um, on the subject of um, uh, components in the SDK, to the best of your knowledge right now, all of the third party components that you've collected are the latest versions? or Yes, okay. the latest versions. For um, example, the BBCC, the day that we released the SDK, the BBCC released a, a newer version. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, but the, the, these was an update on for back fixes if I'm not wrong. And um, when it comes to uh, the actual uh, contents of the SDK, uh, so is there a way to figure out? Um, I don't know when the last SDK re release was. How was it? Uh, it was uh, last year, 2021, okay. at uh, December. And um, is it? Possible to tell what's changed between those um, easily, like a yes. change log or something. Well, or yeah. even just like without downloading the package or either or. or. Okay, uh, without downloading the information is the one that you see in uh, the website. If you download it, there is a change log 
uh, inside the packet before you install anything, there is a txt file with all the changes and all the versions that were changed. Okay. Um, I do have a Git related question. What What is the underlying reason why there is not a full port for Git? Ah. <laughs> One of the reasons I think is that if you want to support it, you need LLVM, mm -hmm. okay? We don't have something like that. Uh, otherwise, you have to figure out how to make it work. You have to uh, compile the uh, library Git uh, version two. Git cannot be compiled with GCC. So, here you are. No, that is a question, not a statement. Is it, is uh, it true? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I tried a couple of times. I didn't uh, succeed, but I didn't uh, put a lot of effort on that. I would we like should, to we have should that. talk. I'm curious exactly where it's where. It, I'd like to have the latest version, but uh, yeah. Seems like uh, I mean, simple Git probably needs like 80, 90 percent of what most people will need, um, but it does seem. For anyone that does development work in a modern context, they pretty much, at this point, are using Git in some capacity. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, it blows my mind that there is not a fort for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a man hour problem. And really. then we can uh, uh, push or persuade uh, Simon to include that uh, with uh, the code. Because right now, components is uh, using only support SBL, so right. that will be that will be useful as well. And the SBM right. we have is very old. Uh, maybe that version that is included in the SBS yes, is, cool. is newer than the one that you might have, right. but it's the last version uh, on that uh, was released. Okay. And yeah. And that's one of the things uh, I would like to mention, uh, like uh, the uh, proposal asked uh, earlier, what the community can do. If there are things that we need and you are capable to do it, go there and do it. Because who, who else is going well, to do it? So w uh, with a lot of volunteer-led efforts like this, um, the, the, the weakest link is the person that's doing the work. Um, if uh, uh, you know, if, if you, um, you know, don't make it back home, yeah. uh, all of that knowledge goes away, right? Um, all of that, that tribal knowledge that only exists in your head um, exactly. on, on the processes that you followed to release this. Um, and uh, so my own personal uh, uh, ask, I guess, would be to uh, write down as much of it as you can. Well, even if it's not in a method, even if it's not in a uh, 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 organized enough um, document that you would be comfortable sharing it with others. Yeah, it yeah. can be added to the wiki. So and to that end, exactly like you said, Ellie, and add the information you figure out. When we, I mean, what I yeah. last was trying to learn C and program. As I was figuring things out, I was using the wiki to try to learn from there. Exactly. But I was also ah, the wiki really didn't explain how to do this, this, and this. The reason why it's a wiki is you can edit the wiki. Get in touch with one of the devs, George, I don't know if you can do it, who can go on in and give you access to the wiki, and you can edit the wiki to make it better for all the other people that are following behind you that are also trying to learn those same things. To that end, I know I've uploaded a number of examples of code mm -hmm. to the wiki um, as I've figured out things. Um, you know, really what I probably should do is go pull those side examples out of to you to add them into, yeah. the next, yeah. into the next SDK also. But, you know, you have the SDK that has the stuff that you can compile right there on the drive. You have the wiki where it's there also where you can cut and paste it and install it. Exactly. And, and there's verbiage that goes along that code to explain how that stuff worked. So you can see how to, you know, open up a request or, or start the program and read the arguments. Yeah. Um, it's all there on the wiki. Um, does this so that's sense? for the volunteers to do, the people out there. You know, you want to learn. As you learn, help other people learn after the wiki. Yeah, actually. And right now, we all have access to the to internet, right? You have our own, there's no excuse to not use the, the wiki because, I don't know, 
So I think that if we have a single uh, place where all the, the, the knowledge and all the truth about the development with the Middle West core is uh, gathered, that's the best place to, to have. Of course, there are uh, our communities and our forms that people are uh, helping a lot, like uh, on osforcoding.net and uh, amigas.net. If someone has a problem with uh, the um, something, he tries to compile something and it doesn't work, he can ask there and someone is going to, to help. One of, the, um, one of the things that I think uh, is sort of a, uh, an occupational hazard, if you want to call it that, is uh, for, for everyone that has been involved in Amiga software development for a long time, they know that all those resources exist. Yeah. Um, but for someone that might just have an Amiga OS install and uh, be a software developer but not ever have, you know, never touched software development on Amiga OS, um, if you have to go hunting for those resources yourself, yeah, yeah. the barrier to entry is, is significantly um, uh, higher than um, if you know those resources are there. Right? Yeah. Does the SDK itself provide any of those breadcrumbs about, you know, here are resources that you could go to for, uh, you know, community support? Uh, for community support, no. Uh, in the introduction PDF file, you have the information, and uh, even on the first page, you have the URL of the wiki, amigaos.net, which is, let's say, the, the most official uh, right. way to, to get that information that you need. Uh, but uh, no, we don't. Uh, I don't mention in that uh, document, the, document the the forums. Okay, uh, maybe that's something that we might uh, need to, to add. One thing too that I had thought about is, um, in terms of lowering the barrier to, uh, you know, compiling a Hello World app or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, are there any end-to-end -to -end, um, documents or maybe even a YouTube video or something where you take the SDK, download it, install it on a on a stock uh, Amigo S system? Um, so that people know what they're getting into before they. In, uh, if you visit the os 4 coding.net, there is a whole section with uh, videos. And Great. there are videos from the dev cons that happened in Nami West uh, the previous years. And there are videos from uh, YouTube where you can find um, about the development of os 4 Hey. Uh, if you Check, uh, and George actually made a couple from his stream. Nice. Video tutorials. Also, I have uh, done a video about a stream uh, on my own with the previous SDK and how you can combine a fellow board. And I talked about the structure of the SDK and the folders in there. And uh, that was a year ago, but I plan to do one more for the new SDK and all this stuff. And that's uh, where? Well, they are on uh, my YouTube channel. Okay. That, uh, of course, are going to be uh, added in this uh, page for OS4 coding. OS4 coding is only dedicated for Amiga OS4. Right. So most of the developers are looking on that and Amigans.net, which is the, the biggest forum for Amiga OS4 users, right? Yeah, right. That um, um, to the wiki. And the wiki. And the, wiki. the thing with the wiki is uh, that you get all the information, but sometimes if you don't have the uh, knowledge or you never have uh, done something before, you might get a little bit confused on things. Right. Well, that's what I was trying to do while because I only dabbled very little in C coding. And as I was going through the wiki, and, and it was obviously derived from the original SDK documentation. And you know, you're trying to figure this out. What exactly do they mean by this? The whole reason for that, I would go into it, I would edit it, or in one case, I remember loading up something about requesters and it was like, this really wasn't making sense. So I actually made a new page in the wiki that was, I think it was requesters 101, you know? Yeah. It was a whole separate little page for the idiot coder. <laughs> requesters for noobs, yeah. <laughs> you know? I think it's Here's how you bring it up. Yeah, um, one of the biggest, you know, yeah. uh, Shortcomings of wikis in general is that they bit wrong. They do. And they bit wrong. 
<coughs> it becomes less use information is correct. If you go to reference here, for just well, I'm going to get an example. If you go to reference under developers, please. Thank you very much. And then uh, scroll down where the SDK section is. Just take a look at release notes for just a moment, if you would. Okay. And scroll down a little bit further. So the last time Soli released one was back in the final edition, and I, I actually did this. Keep scrolling. This is something that developers actually need to know. They need to know what functions have been deprecated, what the replacements are, what the new libraries are, what functions to go look and review at. If you go scroll back up here a little bit and click on the deprecated functions link. So the rest of yes, sir. Right there. Thank you very much. And scroll down. Keep going. Yeah, there you go. So the point is, is that if you're using if you're using ASL library, you need to know this because yeah. it, it, the first time you're going to encounter this is when you compile your code. Hopefully, it only gives you a warning, right? Um, but you need to know what to do. Do I just include uh, some include underscore obsolete? What do I replace it with? What do I look at in the autodocs? These types of things are useful. And um, but the point is, is that this was useful, but now. We are several years in the future, and I haven't done this again. <laughs> but that's what some developers are going to need to know. These are some nitty gritty details. So yes, you can suffer newbies, but also for people who are actually updating. So for example, I want to release something for my table here, and I'm going to use your guide to compile with GCC 6 and all that other wonderful stuff. And the next thing I know, I've got all this DOS stuff that I've got to uh, uh, fix. Well, what do I replace it with? I don't know. And it would be useful to have guides that, that guide you through that so that it makes life easier as the developers move on and make things better. Um, we also want to maintain not only backwards compatibility, but the ability for people to very easily adopt the new way of things. Yeah. So I, I should have done this. I, 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 I uh, didn't think that like that. You know that the developers are writing code. Yeah. So they, they never complain on sit down and write thousands of lines of code, but they will always complain if they, you ask them to document of course, anything. Exactly. So other uh, communities, what they do is uh, they say that, okay, um, that day, that weekend, we gather all, all together yeah. online. And that's and about the only way it happens if, with, with volunteers. Yeah, but my point is, <coughs> Most of the people say that, okay, Hyperion is going to do that, or George is going to do that, or no LD is going to I'm, do that. That's and where I'm going. Yeah, you're doing it. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. Let me know when you're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have the widget. Yeah, you right. Update everything. So my point is, why we don't agree on something like that? Let's say that every six months we arrange a, a weekend where we go and update uh, whatever we can. Whatever is of interest to you. Right. I mean, so in the open source community, in, in um, community driven Linux distributions, there are often um, uh, documentation teams yes. of people who are not necessarily full blown software developers, but would, are working towards that goal or would like to just know more. Um, and, and they often provide a perspective that an, uh, a grizzled software developer won't have, um, especially when it comes to the documentation as assuming certain things, because pretty much all documentation assumes some things even without realizing it, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you assume a certain level of baseline knowledge, um, and uh, uh, you kind of have to, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you just, you know, exactly. never stop writing, exactly. right? Um, but so, so I actually think the wiki is great for, for that because you can, you know, you don't have to have a thousand page manual. Right. You can just link off to something that exactly. is right. specific to that one area um, without having to have that, a manual blow. That's what I was kind of looking at is because I don't know, you know, the API of Amiga OS, now it's fascinating and awe, awe inspiring what Camilla yesterday just whipped through code. Yeah. And she's just going, oh yeah, I need to put a gap in here to boom, 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 from memory, coding a, a GUI and intuition. And she knows what all the damn gadget classes and names are. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. It would have taken me a week to have put one button on the screen. You know, she's like whipping them out like nothing. So, but in the course of my doing this, my whole goal is, okay, I, you know, there's an example code. 
that shows you how to put buttons up there, but it's making those preconceptions. Right. I mean, if you go, uh, I haven't done a lot of them because I did things, because some of them are written as tutorials that were in the Amy West pages. Right. So in there, there's like a tutorial on startup on programs. I know I did one where right. I went through this whole thing and tried to figure out how tool types get loaded into a program. If you write a program, and it could be either started from the CLI or from the port bench, how does your program get its startup information? One, the program has to figure out, is it started from the workbench and the CLI? Two, you can load the stuff either from the tool types or from the program, the parent, uh, the parameters that were fed to the command yeah. line. And that code's in there. There's example code in there to do that. And it just prints out the results right there on the screen. So you can fire it up, then it prints out the results of what you started in the CLI, or it opens up the window and shows you what you got. That was the kind of example code that was helpful to me while I was trying to write something. And it's in the tutorial on the wiki. Um, I said I did something with a requester, I did some other miscellaneous little examples. Or for example, I should do with this button whenever I... Uh, the thing is, that everyone is on the web. On the of first, course, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Goes then everyone. So we, we are... Uh, look in our microphones right now and we say okay i don't have time to yeah, update yeah. the week and that, that information yeah. or whatever uh, we need as a, a, a community to step up and start doing things towards that direction because a lot of developers all developers from uh, amica was four came did the amazing things left and all this knowledge is lost right so I agree with you, but we, we need to see that as a community and start doing this stuff. Right. Well, and we can't anymore wait for someone to do it. We can't wait for Steven to do it, or uh, Paul, or Eddie, or you, or me. We have to do it all together. And it's, to me, it's, uh, there are uh, examples from other communities that we can embrace and start uh, working like that. And there's obviously the, the benefit Really shouldn't have to be said. You know, you pass on this information, this knowledge. Yeah, it took you a little bit of time to sit there and write the page, but you could help five other people who are all beginner developers who are trying to figure out how to program something. And look, you figured out how to read the tool yeah. types. Yeah. How many different programs do you have where they can't get the information into the program? You have the source code right there. It compiles. It's on the wiki, yeah. and that's just my the little example I know about. Every programmer has to figure out things as they go along. Figure something out, take an evening to sit down and document it on the wiki. And uh, it's not only for providing code. You don't need, it, uh, sometimes you don't even need to provide code. Uh, I was on uh, OS4 coding and I was, you remember the media water that I created an application, okay? I was thinking, how do they have a list browser and then they change the content of the, the right by clicking something on the list browser? I, did, I couldn't. Uh, find the, the logic behind it, the algorithm. And I went to the forum and I asked and they said, okay, you, you need to have this browser and uh, pages and you can do it. They didn't provide any uh, functional code, but they provided the logic behind it. Enough and information then that if you have that, yeah. you can say, okay, how I create uh, pages or how I create this browser. And you can go and do that. But for, for someone that would like to start on that, uh, the examples that are included in the SDK are the perfect way to start creating something and the wiki as we discussed. Uh, Does the SDK, uh, when the SDK gets updated, is it uh, clear what the system requirements are in terms of versions of OS components? Uh, for the SDK yes. itself? For the SDK to work. Uh, I mean, that was fun. It doesn't mean that the latest OS4. Right. Sorry? The latest public release. I think you can uh, use, uh, it can be, I mean, that was 4.0 because the SDK doesn't rely on anything on the, uh, from the I mean, OS. Right, but I mean, if you compile something, if you compile I mean, OS, OS, I'm the latest. Right, you have to have, because you're going to compile something, yeah, it's going to be looking for OS 4.1. You're so running on 4.0, it's going to. Yeah. Right, but that, that's unless, you can, uh, and unless you make it compatible uh, with I mean, that was fault. Right. I guess I should rephrase the question then. What is, how does one um, 
determine the lower bound of what the SDK supports. In terms of the supported code? The in terms of code? if you compile code, okay. yeah. you know, what will it actually run on? Uh, if you compile code, let's say, and you use uh, methods that are included in the latest version of new lib, you, you well, and you think about it, that person. Oh, yeah. in Amigo OS, there's nothing preventing you from going back and using a, an old intuition call. Yes. Right. It's still in there. You could write code that would run on if OS 4.0.0.0 yeah. because the, the old intuition classes. window class calls are still there. I guess where I'm yeah. going with this, though, is, is you know, uh, under um, Xcode, I, I can compile an application and know exactly which versions of Mac OS it will work with. Yes. Um, I don't believe any kind of comparable mechanism exists because it's fairly complicated to um, arrive at that. But uh, but it would still be good to have a um, uh, have a, a sentence that you know says basically if you're running if you're not running this version of Intuition, don't bother. Yeah. It won't work. Okay. Uh, in the autodocs, the methods that we have for the API, uh, they say the version of the new lib, for example, new lib, that needs to, the minimum version. Okay. Okay, so this is the version that this method was introduced. Yeah. And that is for DOS as well. So someone uh, who reads the autodocs can find that information there. Uh, and then I think, uh, yeah, you, you can create any application to run even the old uh, 4.0 versions of uh, Amiga OS uh, because some people still use that if you want. Well, uh, in theory, couldn't you with BBC? 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 Yeah. <laughs> you could, with the SDK, write 68K code and compile it to BBC. BBCC? Yeah, because BBCC is mostly ANSI. Okay. Right. Okay. So if you add in the SDK the target file for the 68K, you can do it. Right. So it all comes down to the code you're going to use. Right. Go pull out your 1.3 RKMs yeah. and write that code, yeah. pick that compiler, and generate the code for OS 3.1. Yeah. If you want to do it, you, you can do it. And the, all the methods from the uh, earlier versions of Amiga OS 4 are, already, are, are there. Maybe sometimes you will have to use the obsolete header files, obsolete DOS, for example, but they are there and you can do it. If you want to develop uh, uh, or, or, or um, just uh, port an app um, that was uh, designed you know, for Amigo S3.0 um, to say 3.1.2 and make use of some of the new API calls, hmm. um, uh, can, is, can all of that be done um, under under OS four, or must it be done under Amiga OS three? I think you can do it uh, under OS four just fine. Okay. But my recommendation for that is to see what are the changes right. between the APIs, yeah. and then uh, use uh, uh, pre-compiled directives and say that if it is Amiga OS, use this part of the code. If it is uh, Amiga OS three, use this part of the code. And do that change so that you don't break the the your code to combine for <coughs> Unless uh, if you don't care about that, yeah, right. change it. Well, well, obviously, from what Camilla showed, they have an OS 3.2 NDK, so. Yeah. You yeah. know, and in theory, I, how could you, could you install that? We in generate. Uh, think I was for? Yeah, I know. How would that work? I don't know. That would be, that would be a whole other thing. But that would be uh, so, but the thing is that the Amiga OS 3.2 NDK with Amiga OS 4 SDK, uh, they have a lot of differences, but for gadgets and classes, they are pretty close, and you might be able to do similar stuff. Then they won't be, co be able to, co to be combined for Amiga OS 3 without changing it. But I don't know if this is possible 100% with all the classes, right? Right, right. Because a lot of the classes, of the reaction classes that they created for 3.2, uh, follow the same path with an or yeah, right. vice versa. Sometimes. Uh, here. Yes. So, uh, we can keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That's it.
That's all. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, George. Thank you so much.